Hey guys, I hope you're having a very suave day. So especially in the larger cities of this world, there are usually extremely easy ways to simply blow your hard earned cash, especially when it comes to buying food. So if you're anyone like me, you're essentially chomping at everything that you see, whether it's edible or not. So in this video, I'm gonna be trying to share with you some of the things that I would buy in Berlin to save even just a little bit for foods and groceries, because as you know, these things do add up. So in a short while, I'm going to be doing a grocery run, potentially to multiple places in Berlin to get the most bang for my buck. I'm going to buy some of the things that seem affordable to me, and in the end, come back and show you exactly how much I spent. Okay, so before I go on my grocery haul, I'm just looking online to see what supermarkets are in the area. I've mentioned these supermarkets before, Kaufland, Rewe, Real, Edeka, those are standard supermarkets in Berlin. There are also what you would call discount supermarkets as well, such as Aldi, Lidl, Penny and Norma. I think there are also many more. So if you're looking at affordable prices in Berlin, you can pretty much stop here. You don't have to look any further. You can get a pretty decent bang for your buck if you shop at those discount supermarkets. In saying this, if you have the possibility of splitting your grocery trip into different places, you will mostly save even more paper. Produce is generally way cheaper in oriental supermarkets like Bolu or Eurogida. You might be able to find produce in those supermarkets that you can't find in typical German supermarkets like Kaufland. Another thing you can do is you can typically find cheaper produce in farmers markets scattered around Berlin. The Maybachufer Markt in Neukölln is one example of that, but there are many scattered around Berlin. I'll leave a link in the description box below so you can check them out. So I'll stop yapping about and let's do this. Okay, so we've probably all been guilty of doing this. We go to the supermarket, we go to the produce section, and we essentially choose and pick the vegetables or fruits that we feel look really good because essentially they look really good, they probably taste better, and overall they generally look a lot nicer, right? But as consumers, if you're going to the produce section and you're consistently always getting something that looks like this, perfect, untouched, looks absolutely amazing then what you're essentially telling the supermarket chains and the wholesalers is that you are as a consumer interested in those products so that puts a lot of pressure for farmers to grow crops that don't look something like this so when we're in the supermarket and we constantly buy fruits and vegetables that look really really good then essentially you're telling wholesalers and large chain supermarkets to constantly stock these ones and forget about these poor buggers. So this is a company called Surplus and the whole concept behind this company is that they essentially rescue fruits and vegetables that don't make the cut to large supermarkets like Kaufland, like Real. So not only do they take these ones, they also take these ones. But you are buying fruits and vegetables that would essentially otherwise go to waste. So at the end of the day, it's a win-win situation. You save money, you save the planet, and you reduce food waste. So what you find in this particular supermarket is that in appropriate sections for dry foods and long shelf life foods, you'll see a lot of products that are past their best before date or drawing close to their best before date. And this is something that also goes in line with what their concept is to pretty much rescue foods.
So we're back home, back from my grocery trip. Here are the items that I bought from three different supermarkets. And for those of you who are interested, I'll leave some details in the next few seconds on the video itself on the prices of each individual item. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff, feel free to pause the video. So the bill here came to 47 euros and 76 cents in total. Yes, we could have had a bolognese week where we spent one euro per portion. However, we want to be healthy here, guys. We want to have a balanced diet and hence the variety of products that you see on the table. However, if you consider the sheer amount of volume that's on the table, such as these five kilos of potatoes that I bought for one euro and 49 cents, then it is pretty much considered a steal in my opinion. I think the majority of foods in this table are whole foods and it just goes to show that if you buy whole foods and prepare them yourselves, you just save a lot of money. The only thing that was a little bit more expensive was this smoked pork that I wanted to use as an ingredient for a German dish that I want to prepare. This was 10 euros and 45 cents. And the next pricier thing on the list were these two packets of sausages. Um, this was also part of what I wanted to make for the week. I did buy a few things that were spontaneous for the future. So some coconut milk over here and uh, just a packet of chips as well for one euro as well. So not too bad if I do say so myself. Actually, I did forget the additional vegetables that I bought. Let me bring them out. All right, so we've got spinach over here and we've got parsley. So look at that, doesn't that look healthy? So this is a bunch of parsley that you can use obviously for different things. And this is a special type of spinach that I don't believe is that easily accessible in typical German supermarkets, but this will be put to good use as well. This was one euro 50, I believe. If you want to save even more money on greens like spinach and you have the space outside the balcony, I suggest you even grow it yourself, which we've been doing outside as well in the balcony. So one thing that I suggest is really to look at the bottom section of each aisle for the items that you're looking for in supermarkets. Generally, you'll find that a lot of those items are a lot cheaper because they're value brands. They're brands that were uh, developed and created by the supermarket chains themselves, for example. And generally, you'll find it to be a lot cheaper than premium brands that are situated higher on, on the shelves. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to essentially prepare as many meals and portions as I can with the ingredients that I have. I have a few ideas in mind. I'm going to divide the number of portions when I'm done with the total amount of the grocery haul and I'm going to see how much money I save by pretty much just preparing things myself. I already know that it's going to be much cheaper than getting takeaway or going to a restaurant every day, which I know a lot of people do in this city because it's just so easily accessible. So let's see how I go and I'll come back to you when everything's done. So that's it. How do you all like my German meals? I bet you guys want some as well, right? So it turns out that for each recipe that I had, I was able to divide each of them by nine portions. So 18 portions in total for both of those recipes. And if you're interested in the recipes themselves, I'll leave a link in the description box below for both of them. So you guys can give it a try if you want. So I was actually really happy with how the Maultaschen turned out. They're absolutely amazing and very, very tasty. The total cost of the ingredients was 14 euros and 62 cents in total with ingredients left to spare and divide that by nine portions and we get one euro and 62 cents per meal. For the Kasslerbraten, the total cost of the ingredients came out to be 21 euros and 20 cents with ingredients left to spare as well. Divide that by nine portions and we get around two euros and 36 cents per meal. So not the cheapest given the higher price of the meat, however, still not too shabby and a well-balanced diet overall. 
So if you've made it this far, then thank you very much. You are officially level 9,000 on the cool scale. If you've been watching until now, I'd be super grateful if you could leave a comment below letting me know where are you guys watching from around the world. I'm actually very, very curious. So all things aside, another point of this video was to show you guys that eating out frequently does add up, at least in Germany. I'm just looking at food delivery options and you could already spend effectively around 10 to 20 euros just getting half a decent meal online. So even if this video inspired you a little bit to even try a little bit of German cuisine cooking, then that's all I could ever ask for. Of course, during the times that we are going through right now, it is always advisable to support your local business and family run restaurants, things like that. So all I can say is have a bit of balance and you'll be fine. Please let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this video and if you'd like to see more content that is like this. And if you do choose to subscribe, then thank you so much for supporting small creators like myself, someone who still probably has absolutely no idea what the hell he's doing. I hope you guys have a lovely day or night from wherever you're watching this and I'll see you guys in the next one.